Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Vesna Lushitsky. I'm from the University of Vienna. This is my colleague, Tanya Vesik. She's from the uh, Austrian Academy of Sciences and, and in the University of Graz. Um, what our presentation is about, as already mentioned, we will focus very much on the users, so we will resonate what Daria said yesterday, what Francisca said today, um, and we are hoping to um, get this um, discussion going. Let me just check. Okay, so uh, what we will present today is the motivation why we decided to conduct this study, the objective of this pilot study, the methods that we developed to um, get some useful results, um, the study setting, so who were our users um, or uh, who were the participants in the study. Uh, we will present the results and then at the end we will make some conclusions and recommendations for hopeful uh, further development in this field. So. Um, our major motivation was um, actually the last year's presentation um, of the user involvement study in Wroclaw, um, where we missed translation studies. Um, maybe they were part of another group um, or anything else, but um, we asked ourselves, where are our translators or translation studies scholars? Um, we consider um, this user group to be a potentially very interesting group uh, for the um, Clarin goals, um, especially because they are very diverse and um, come from different uh, perspectives um, to the um, usage of Clarin services. They can be users or reusers of the existing Clarin, res uh, Clarin resources. On the other hand, they can be potentially uh, very active contributors, and especially for uh, multilingual. Uh, resources for corpora, parallel corpora, terminology resources, lexica, and so on. On the other hand, um, we also use a lot of various language resources um, in training settings. Um, here, a small side note on how the training in the uh, translation studies is uh, conducted in modern translator uh, training. Um, generally, this is a situated learning, meaning that we try to um, simulate a near-life experience so that the students uh, work on actual real-life projects, um, so we try to simulate um, their later work life. Um, it has been also established before in previous studies that research competence is a part of translation competence, so uh, we assume that our students could also um, have some research competencies. So the objectives of this study were, uh, first of all, to ask ourselves how to bring this user group on board, what do they need. Um, then we wanted to have a look how they actually use the services. So when searching for language resources, what are actually the criteria based on which they decide whether to use a resource or to abandon it, and so on. And then, concretely, we wanted to test out how they use the uh, VLO, um, which functionalities um, they use, um, how satisfied they are with the results, with metadata, and so on. Um, for the methodology, um, here I should really emphasize that it, this is only a pilot study. Of course, we had our small group of students um, so this is the first attempt to do such a study. This also means that the results of this study cannot be generalized um, to uh, translation studies per se, um, so please uh, bear uh, this in mind. We also conducted a user-centered study, so we very much focused on what the users were doing, how satisfied they were with the results, and so on. Um, so we observed the users while they were performing the tasks, um, and we were very much interested in um, what they have to say about the services. Um, we also combined um, the quantitative and qualitative approach to this, so the students um, described um, the results, um, described how satisfied they were with the results, and so on, uh, but they also did some um, quantitative assignment of uh, quality metrics, and so on. And as already uh, being said before, this was a situated learning situation, meaning that they were assigned various kinds uh, of real-life projects, if you want. So um, 
so uh, that they had something to work with. I should also mention that um, this was conducted in the setting of specialized translation, uh, meaning our students uh, don't work in um, the sense of uh, literature translation, but this was a specialized uh, translation setting. Um, to the methodology, um, this was actually a three-phase research design. Um, we established very early in the study that we actually don't know how um, translators or uh, students in translation studies actually approach language resources. So we didn't even know uh, which criteria are important to them when they go out and search for resources, not necessarily only in Clarin, but in general. Um, and language resources are definitely an important tool um, in their toolkit. Um, so in the first phase, we actually wanted to explore this. So which criteria are essential for this user group? Um, based on these results, uh, we uh, went into the second phase uh, where we wanted to have a look how many resources can be found based on the criteria that were um, established in the first phase. Here, uh, we didn't only look into the uh, Clarin resources, but we conducted this study a bit broader and also looked into other repositories, uh, other platforms, uh, and so on. Um, and based on the uh, language resources that were uniquely found uh, through the VLO, um, we asked the students to uh, assign their perceived quality of the meta that has have been found through the VLO. In the first phase, uh, we only focused on VLO. So um, we asked the students when they are searching for the multilingual language resources in the VLO, what do they miss? Which meta do, uh, metadata do they miss? What's, uh, what's missing for them? Uh, moreover, um, we were also asking them how do they perceive the interface, how satisfied they are with the uh, function functionalities of the VLO uh, when searching, especially for multilingual language resources. Um, to the study setting and to our participants, um, in total there were 64 participants uh, participating in uh, the study. Um, each participant had three working languages, A, B, C languages. I will not go into this, how this works. Anyway, the languages that were covered in total by our participants were quite varied. We had Arabic, Czech, German, English, French, Croatian, Italian, and so on. The whole list is on the slide. Um, as being said before, this is a special translation setting and the students um, participate, uh, uh, that, that participated uh, were students at two Austrian universities in Graz and in Vienna, either at BA or uh, at uh, advanced MA levels um, at both universities. Moreover, um, this was a study that was conducted in so-called cross-language courses, meaning that the students will all different language combinations come together and focus on language technology, language resources in these courses. So that's why we could cover this broad range um, of, of different languages. And the study was conducted uh, throughout two uh, semesters. Just, sorry, uh, another small side note. Um, while conducting this study, because this was already last year and beginning of this year, we worked with the uh, VLO version 3.3, um, so some things uh, might have already changed in uh, the meantime. Tanya will now present you the results. <clears throat> the first results um, refer to the first phase of the study, where we ask which criteria are essential for the user group when searching for language resources in order to make informed decision whether to use uh, language resource or not. Unsurprisingly, at the bottom, you see the language covered are most important for them, followed by the reliability of the sources. In this context, the re reliability of sources means, for example, who is the author of the original data? Does it come from an authority? For example, when translating legal texts for the translator, it is important, uh, it is more reliable to use a corpus that is made of normative text than a corpus of websites. 
also the format is very important in the sense that the format that is provided uh, should be a format that can be directly reused in computer-assisted translation tools. Regarding timeliness, it should be made clear what time span is covered by the resource because in some project it's important that you're working with recent data. Also the modality is uh, relevant because uh, translation studies not only covers translators but also interpreters and for interpreters multimodal corpora or transcribed corpora may be of relevance. These results refer to the second phase of the study, where 25 students were asked to search for language resources in their working language in different registries and catalogs, and they identified 210 potential relevant resources. It has been to, uh, it has been to specify that there were multiple men, uh, naming possible. So, for example, the Europal corpus that has uh, more languages could have been mentioned more times because one group was working on Spanish resources and one group was working on um, English resources, for example. 20% of the resources were uniquely found in the VLO. In the next step, uh, on these 20% uh, of resources uniquely found in the VLO, the perceived quality of the metadata in order to make an um, informed decision was rated by the students, and the median was 3. In the third phase, we concentrated solely on the VLO and on multilingual uh, resources and we asked students to search for multilingual resources and uh, to tell us what are the metadata they are missing. The users uh, would need additional metadata regarding which is the original and which is the translation when they are, for example, parallel corpora. If the translation is a human translation or if is the machine translation, and detailed information regarding the translators and the tra translation process. For example, if it's machine translation, was it post-edited by human? In the third phase, we also asked the students how they perceived the interface and the functionalities of the VLO. You have to keep in mind that we used the previous version of the VLO for the study. And the user stated that it would be useful to have a multilingual interface since they were searching in their working language for multilingual resources. It would be natural for them to search also in an interface that is um, in their language. And they stated that it was difficult to formulate the search query for mul searching for multilingual language resources because in the version of 3.3 it was not possible to select more than one language. One user also stated that it would be useful to be able to store search queries or results in some way. As my colleague said, due to the study design, the results of this pilot study can only be generalized to a certain extent. Nevertheless, based on this pilot user study, we recommend the following. Optimizing the faceted search, so implementing multi-value selection for a single facet, especially for searching for language combination, would be very useful. This feature is already implemented in the curation instance of the VLO, and it would be very useful if this feature could be implemented also in the public version of the VLO. Optimizing the metadata would another issue. We know that Clarin is not providing metadata, but Clarin could raise awareness at the side of the data um, provider that there are user groups that have special needs regarding metadata. And optimizing the interface by localizing it into different languages followed up by localization of the metadata. 
Last but not least, improving the outreach and the user involvement. Since this was only a pilot study, a larger study would be needed. When doing user studies, the diversity of the user groups has to be taken into account. In our case, that would uh, translate into including also practitioners, translation studies researchers and scholars, trainers and students. Also more outreach and dissemination to the specific user group would be needed. Uh, one step uh, would be the in preparation clearing uh, C Center for Terminology Resources and Translation Corporate at the University of Vienna. Thank you very much. Thank you. Questions, please? Uh, thank you for this very interesting and I think very important talk. Uh, because uh, the, the VLO and actually the repositories kind of stand and fall on their usability. I would be interesting about the localization. You said that uh, the interface should be localized. Are you, would that be enough? I mean, what about the metadata itself? Because if you have the whole interface in German, then presumably you also want to say corpus with a K rather than with a C. Uh, so what are your feelings about that? Well, Estania already mentioned in her talk, but it was not on the slide, we would be in strong support of this, but we know that it has to be taken in small steps. So our first idea was to start with the interface, but definitely we would strongly recommend also metadata, but we know that this is a big um, task. Yeah. Marco? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do have a question. Um, so I'm probably the last one not criticizing the VLO and the functionalities of the VLO, and we are all very experienced in that. Um, could you tell us what you concretely do to improve uh, the VLO? Maybe that's actually not a, only a question that's directed to you, but what is your center contributing to the development of the VLO to make, a, to, to, uh, make sure that there's a better user experience? Otherwise, we are probably just targeting about two developers or so. I don't know how many people are just working on the VLO. And about uh, 50 or so of us um, beat on these two developers telling them what they are supposed to do and what they could do better. Of course, what you're doing is, for example, helping each of us who's doing metadata work to know what we can improve our metadata with. But uh, so what do you do to actually improve the, the VLO uh, user experience besides telling the two, two programmers what to do. But maybe actually that's more a question not only to you but also to uh, the ones who are responsible for the further development of the VLO. Um, yeah, you're right. This is not a question in our direction. We are not developing the VLO. Um, and I May I may just add something? I, I hope that this was not understood as a criticism, but as a constructive feedback. And please also bear in mind that VLO was only a, a small part of our study. I know that it came at the end, that is probably the most concrete part, uh, but we hope that we are not now, you know, banging on this, these two developers, but just, you know, giving them input how to improve it. Um, no service or infrastructure can be a standalone thing without the user. So I hope that the users can be also heard and appreciated. So maybe I can uh, have a comment on this because actually I do believe that we at our institute uh, contribute to the development of the VLO. And in our, uh, as was mentioned, in the curation, so-called curation instance or develop, so we have a special instance of, of the VLO where we have some additional features which allow us to uh, better investigate the metadata and exactly, for example, this uh, uh, often asked feature for multi-facet, multi-value selection is already implemented in our version and it's actually we decided yesterday that we will uh, merge it or put it into the uh, production instance of the VLO in the next next uh, release. So, uh, yeah, and I, you are all welcome to and we will also present it yesterday, tomorrow 
Um, this this uh, other version of, of the VLO, which uh, has some additional features, and you are all welcome to use it and have a look at it. Uh, and we can then see what of what additional features can be added, or what of these features can be provided to the to the production instance. And and yes, we have actually one full developer almost working on either the curation module or the VLO, so which both are not just banging uh, or he, be, uh, the the. Uh, the, the two the developers, but really providing some, some input. Thanks a lot for this very useful um, paper. Um, I, because it's very useful, I would like to ask you or encourage you if you could share the protocol with the rest of the community so that the same um, sort of survey could be done on other uh, user groups. Uh, from other fields in social sciences and digital humanities, mm -hmm. that's one. And the other is uh, if you could identify, there are some problems with the VLO, there are some problems with the metadata, but there might be some problems with students not being experienced enough or being taught how to use the repositories. So maybe if you could identify the problem areas that can easily be solved, um, some gaps that can be sort of um, solved by some training, simple training uh, materials, like tutorials or something. That would be or also very useful feedback. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, definitely, will do. Thank you. Um, just maybe a small mention, the students got the introduction into how to use the VLO, so they were not virgins, if you want, when first seeing VLO, so we showed them how to use it and so on, and then they only focused on their working languages and how to get the most out of it. Yeah? But we will definitely share our protocols and how we did the study. Yeah? I have a question about the 20% mm -hmm. of resources that were uniquely found mm -hmm. in the VLO. You mentioned that in one of your mm -hmm. first slides. Um, actually, it's two questions. One is, uh, did you do an analysis of the characteristics of those 20%? Were there special collections, or could you explain why they show up only in the VLO? And the other is, how many of the others that you found were not found in the VLO? Okay, um, we did not in-depth analyze what types of resources were uniquely found in VLO. We m might say that maybe um, there is definitely um, an error margin in this. Uh, meaning that the um, resources were in, well not well labeled in other repositories, so there might be even you know some overlap, but showed as unique resources. Um, to the other repositories, catalogs, and so on, um, I have to mention here um, again the LT Observe catalog, which has proven to be the most useful to the students, uh, but this must also uh, ally to the fact that um, the in the LT Observe project we looked into resources for machine translation, um, and this was then a selection of picked out uh, um, resources for machine translation. So there might be an overlap between what the students were looking for um, and the LT Observe catalog. Mm -hmm. And it can also depend on which language combination they were looking for. So also this is a factor. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. More questions? If no, then thank you again. Thank you.